Now suppose that we know that at the current price P, wage W and rental rate R, it's profit maximizing to produce the output level X using the input bundle K and L. Now we wouldn't be able to tell that by just looking at this picture. By just looking at this picture, all we know is that K and L are a least cost way of producing this level of output. But we wouldn't know that we're producing the right quantity of the output. We would know that we're operating on the cost minimizing ray. But we wouldn't know that we're at the right point on that ray for profit maximization, where profit maximization implies that the marginal revenue product of labor is equal to the wage and the marginal revenue product of capital is equal to the rental rate. To see that that's the profit maximizing production plan, we'd actually have to look at this three dimensional picture. In that three dimensional picture, we'd have this production plan. So that's the production plan X, L, and K. And there would be a profit sheet that would be tangent at that production plan. This production plan would lie on this ray. And that in three dimensions would place it right here. So a ray from the origin, which we could graph in two dimensions. If we did that, we'd put output on the vertical axis, what we measure on the vertical axis here, and then we would put both input, labor and capital, on the horizontal axis, and we could do that because they are varying by the same proportion. So this would be the labor in proportion to capital that happens on this cost minimizing ray. And this shape then would translate into this shape here. The profit sheet that's tangent at this point would, when we slice it along this ray, just be a profit line. So we would be at a point that looks like this if we just looked at this slice. Now, in the short run, the firm can't actually vary both capital and labor. So in the short run, the firm is fixed to the level of capital that it currently has, which is this level of capital. So in the short run, the firm can only move to the right and left in this picture, which is equivalent to saying that the firm will operate on a slice here that holds capital fixed, but that also goes through this profit maximizing point. And we know what that looks like in two dimensions. That's just a short run production function. The function that varies labor but holds capital fixed at this level. So this is fixed at this current level. And we have labor on the horizontal axis and output here. And we know what the profit line looks like in this picture. It's simply a line that has slope of W over P. And at this point here, that tangency implies that this profit maximizing condition holds. Of course, both of them hold when this is, in fact, the long run profit maximizing production plan. But in particular, the short run condition holds along the slice that holds capital fixed. So we can now ask what's going to happen if the price increases. So suppose the output price, P, increases from the initial P, this price, to a new price, P prime. Well, we know what's going to happen in this picture in the short run. Price in the denominator is increasing, which means the fraction as a whole is decreasing which means the profit line is becoming shallower and the new profit maximizing production plan will have a tangency out here on the shallower portion of the short run production function. So instead of using the production plan L, we're going to use more labor than we did before. So something like L prime. We can see that that has to be the case by just looking at this equation. If the price goes up, then this side of the equation goes up. But the wage hasn't changed, so now we have an inequality. The marginal revenue product of labor is greater than the wage, 
the worker is earning more in additional revenue than she's costing us. Therefore, we're going to hire more workers. So when this increases, in the short run, it means that we hire more labor. So we are going to increase the amount of labor until we're at a tangency again, until the new price times marginal product of labor is equal to the wage. So this condition is going to hold again, but at the new price. And we can make sure that happens in the short run because we can vary labor in the short run. We can actually make sure in the short run we can get this equation to hold again because we can't vary capital. There's another way you can see what happens, and that is to use the picture from the second step of two-step profit maximization. In that picture, we graph the marginal cost curve put dollars on this axis and we had the initial price where we produced what price is equal to marginal cost so that's our original output quantity this output quantity in this picture or this output quantity in this picture now when the price goes up what happens in the picture what well, price goes up on this axis to this new price which means price is equal to marginal cost at a higher level of output, at some output level x prime. And the only way to get to that higher level of output in the short run is to increase the amount of labor. So in this picture, we're going to move along that horizontal slice to a higher level of labor, to this L prime, and we're going to produce on a higher isoquant the isoquant that passes through that point. In other words, we're going to produce a higher level of output x prime. So that's what's going to happen in the short run. We can make sure the short run profit maximizing condition holds by just increasing the amount of labor we hire and producing more. But what about the long run? In the long run, we have to end up back on this cost minimizing ray because the wage and rental rate hasn't changed which means the places where there is a tangency between the isoquants and these isocost budgets hasn't changed so we must continue on the cost minimizing ray in the long run we must end up back on this slice back on the slice that we graphed here so there too we're going to move to a higher point this line this plane becomes shallower and so we're going to end up at a new tangency but more importantly we're going to end up using the same proportion of labor and capital as we used originally we're just going to produce more and in fact we're going to produce more than we did in the short run because as we'll see later the long run marginal cost curve is shallower than the short run marginal cost curve which means at that new price, we're going to go further out. So we're going to end up somewhere above here, somewhere on this portion of the cost minimizing ray. That might involve hiring less labor or hiring more labor. We can't be sure. But we're going to end up somewhere up here in the long run. So in the long run, then, we're going to increase capital. We're going to go to a higher level of capital. So we're going to increase capital and we're going to adjust labor some more until our profit maximizing conditions hold until at the new price price times marginal product of labor is equal to the wage and price times marginal product of capital is equal to the rental rate and that'll also involve an increase in output beyond that short run increase which we called x prime so what happens is that the firm doesn't change the proportion of labor to capital in the long run it simply scales up production we're moving to a higher isoquant, this isoquant up here. 
So the firm gets bigger, but it still hires labor and capital by the same proportion. We're simply moving along the cost minimizing ray from the origin. And that's what's called a scale effect. We're not substituting between capital and labor. We continue to use the same proportions. We simply move along that cost minimizing ray to a higher point, to a point where these equations hold once again. Now, the reverse would happen if price fell. If price fell, we would also have a scale effect, but in the other direction. We would reduce the scale of our firm, but we'd still have to end up on the same ray from the origin because wages and rental rates haven't changed, which means the slopes of our ISO cost budgets haven't changed, which means where the tangencies happen hasn't changed. We simply move along that ray to the new profit maximizing production plan.